Hi friends, and welcome to your daily devotional for Saturday, June 26th, 2021. All this month we are talking about sanctuary, and this week in particular we are talking about losing your sanctuary. Have you ever had a time in your life when losing your sanctuary, losing your comfort and safety, actually brought you closer to God? Think about that in these next few moments. Our word from the psalmist today is Psalm 130 from the New Revised Standard Version. Listen now for God's word to us. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word I hope. My soul waits and for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Let us pray. Holy One, in love you created us and called us good. Grant us the deep wisdom of your love that wherever this day leads, our lives may remain rooted in your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 27 through 42 from the Common English Bible. Listen for God's word. But on the next day, the second of the new moon, David's seat was still empty. Saul said to his son, Jonathan, Why isn't Jesse's son come to the table, either yesterday or today? Jonathan answered Saul, David begged my permission to go to Bethlehem. He said, Please let me go because we have a family sacrifice there in town and my brother has ordered me to be present. Please do me a favor and let me slip away so I can see my family. That's why David hasn't been at the king's table. At that, Saul got angry at Jonathan. You son of a stubborn, rebellious woman, he said. Do you think I don't know how you've allied yourself with Jesse's son? Shame on you and on the mother who birthed you. As long as Jesse's son lives on this earth, neither you nor your dynasty will be secure. Now have him brought to me because he's a dead man. But Jonathan answered his father Saul, Why should David be executed? What has he done? At that, Saul threw his spear at Jonathan to strike him, and Jonathan realized that his father intended to kill David. Jonathan got up from the table in rage. He didn't eat anything on the second day of the new moon because he was worried about David and because his father had humiliated him. In the morning, Jonathan went out to the field for the meeting with David and a young servant boy went with him. He said to the boy, go quickly and retrieve the arrow that I shoot. So the boy ran off and he shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy got to the spot where Jonathan had shot the arrow, Jonathan yelled to him, isn't the arrow past you? Jonathan yelled again to the boy, quick, hurry up, 
Don't just stand there. So Jonathan's servant boy gathered up the arrow and came back to his master. The boy had no idea what had happened. Only Jonathan and David knew. Jonathan handed his weapons to the boy and told him, get going. Take these back to town. As soon as the boy was gone, David came out from behind the mound and fell down face to the ground, bowing low three times. The friends kissed each other and cried with each other, but David cried hardest. Then Jonathan said to David, go in peace, because the two of us made a solemn pledge in the Lord's name when we said the Lord is witness between us and between our descendants forever. Then David got up and left, but Jonathan went back to town. Imagine for a moment that you are in Jonathan's place. How do you think he felt being caught between two people that he dearly loved? Our New Testament reading today comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 4, verses 31 through 37 from the New Living Translation. Listen again for God's word to us. Then Jesus went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and taught there in the synagogue every Sabbath day. There, too, the people were amazed at his teaching, for he spoke with authority. Once when he was in the synagogue, a man possessed by a demon, an evil spirit, cried out, shouting, Go away! Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus reprimanded him. Be quiet, come out of that man, he ordered. At that, the demon threw the man to the floor as the crowd watched. Then it came out of him without hurting him further. Amazed, the people exclaimed, what authority and power this man's words possess. Even evil spirits obey him and they flee at his command. The news about Jesus spread through every village in the entire region. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Luke tells us that people and even demons listened to Jesus because he spoke with authority. What do you think that means? Let us pray. Creating God, your reign of love makes all things new. Plant seeds of confidence and gladness in our hearts so that trusting in your word, we may live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and was raised for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, may God lead you to connect with people in ways beyond your thinking, experience difference which challenges your sense of normal, expose you to needs that awaken your compassion, and give you cause to act for good. I hope you will join us for worship tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. You can join us on Facebook Live or on Zoom or in the sanctuary, and the service will be available later in the day on YouTube. Go in peace and be well.